I can't believe I'm saying this but Linux Mint just killed its legendary menu. Linux Mint 22.3 Xena is finally here and the Mint team just made one of the boldest moves in the distro's history. Linux Mint 22.3 is actually a massive update. We are getting the brand new Cinnamon version 6.6 and this version also brings two new powerful applications that really blew my mind away. I've been playing with this version since the beta dropped and yeah, there's a lot here. This version is also bringing some really fantastic features and performance improvements throughout the system. And in this video, I'm covering it all. The big changes, the improvements and whether Mint's new redesigned menu is the right move or it deserves the hate it's getting. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Okay, let's start off with the biggest change that Linux Mint 22.3 is bringing and this is bold. This time they have completely redesigned the menu. And yeah, take a look at it, let that sink in. I really don't know how to feel about this. I really like the old Mint menu. While I don't hate the new menu, I don't like it either. Let's do a quick side by side. The new menu brings a dedicated sidebar on the left with the user avatar, quick access to folders like desktop and downloads and your pinned apps. This sidebar is definitely more space efficient and it holds more entries than the older menu with those big square icons. Definitely, but I really like the old one. Just like before, you can drag and drop application entries from the menu into the sidebar to pin them. But pinning the file manager locations is a bit different. I will show that in a second. And this is scrollable so this can be exhaustive. The old menu had that familiar three column layout with colorful category icons on the left. You know, bright blue for internet, green for games, it was colorful, instantly recognizable. The new menu, it's gone full symbolic. These category icons are now monochrome wireframes. Cleaner sure, but you lose that instant color coded navigation. And you have to agree, it looks a bit duller, but again, they have given the option to change this back to colorful icons. The power buttons have been moved too. In the old menu, they were bigger. In the new one, they are tucked into corners. And if you hide this taskbar, which you can if you don't like the sidebar, then the power buttons can disappear entirely. It's funny. The layout is more spacious, but it's a complete shift in muscle memory. This menu is also very customizable. You can now right click on the menu icon and jump into customization options and you can configure what places are visible in the file manager here. And if you want, you can completely hide the sidebar. And this gives you more of the old style menu. By the way, you can also add your own folders in addition to the folder options available here. You know, your own created folders. Move into it, press Ctrl plus D and it will be bookmarked and it will be available in the Nemo file manager as well as the menu sidebar. Now this will not work for pre-existing folders such as documents and downloads. Those you need to enable from the configure menu option itself. Yeah, you do need a PhD to tweak this thing. But this is absolutely phenomenal. Now I can jump into my working projects directly through the menu. Actually if you think about it, for many people working means opening some apps, maybe the browser. And for almost the equal amount of people, working means opening files and folders. By letting you jump into your working folders directly from the menu, this thing is going to streamline your productivity. Overall, I kinda am missing the old menu. It was so slick, polished and just felt faster to use. I think I am going to need a few days to get used to this new menu. Yeah, this is definitely a big change, especially from Linux Mint standards where providing a consistent and familiar experience has always been a top priority. Linux Mint 22.3 introduces two new system applications, starting off with the first one, the System Information Tool. This is one of my favorite additions in Linux Mint 22.3 because the new system information tool is a game changer for troubleshooting. Traditionally, if you wanted to check your hardware specs, verify which GPU driver you're running or see if your USB device is connecting at full speed, you'd be juggling multiple terminal commands, LSUSB, LSPCI, checking driver modules and stuff. It was not pretty. It may not be complicated for experienced users, but for someone coming from Windows or just wanting quick answers, it's a hassle. Now all that information lives in one clean GUI. Open the system information tool and you get a sidebar with sections for everything. USB shows you a tree view of connected devices with their speeds and power draw. GPU tells you which graphics driver is active and whether hardware acceleration is working for video playback. PCI lists every device on your system and which driver it's using. BIOS shows your firmware version and secure boot status. But here's where it gets really useful. Say your laptop is running hot during video playback. You open the GPU section and see that video acceleration is disabled. Boom, you found the problem in 10 seconds. Or your external SSD is crawling. Check USB and you see it's connected at USB 2.0 speeds instead of 3.0. Cable swap, problem solved. 
This tool also includes a system report section that guides you through post-install essentials like multimedia codecs and setting up time shift backups. It's nudging you towards the right setup without you even realizing you need it. This kind of information is available at your fingertips and so nicely organized and in a readable format that really provides a fantastic window into the internals of what's really going on in your computer. Just fantastic work. I really like the execution of this idea. Alright, this one is for the power users out there. Nemo 6.6, the file manager here, just got a serious upgrade and I am talking about regular expression search support baked right into the file manager. For those who don't know, regex is basically pattern matching on steroids. It's something you'd normally do in the terminal using commands like grep or find, but now you can do it directly in Nemo's GUI. This is huge. Let me show what I mean. Say you're looking for all your 2025 invoices and receipts in PDF format. You can search for 2025 invoice receipt.pdf and boom, Nemo finds exactly those files. That's the power of regex. You can create incredibly specific search patterns to locate files based on complex criteria. This isn't just about regex though. The entire search architecture in Nemo has been rebuilt. The search helpers now run concurrently, which means faster results. Wildcard handling for MIME tabs has also been improved. For developers and system administrators, this brings terminal level search power to the visual interface. You no longer need to drop into the command line for sophisticated file searches. Nemo just became significantly more powerful productivity tool for advanced use cases. The second new application is the system administration tool and this one is all about making boot troubleshooting safer and easier. Right now, this only has one entry that is the boot menu. I think more options will be added to this app in the future. Let's take a look at it. Traditionally, if you wanted to tweak your grub settings like changing the boot timeout or adding kernel parameters to fix a black screen after a driver update, you'd be editing config files in the terminal. One typo, one broken code and your system might not boot. This is not like just changing the wallpaper. Now Mint gives you a clean GUI for all of that. You can control whether the boot menu shows at startup, adjust the timeout so you actually have time to select an OS and enable remember last choice so the system remembers whether you booted into Windows or Mint last time. This option is just phenomenal. For dual booters, this is huge. No more racing against the clock to hit the right option. The system just remembers. You can also manage kernel boot parameters right here. Say you're getting a black screen after an update. Instead of panicking and reinstalling, you add a graphics parameter, reboot and your backend. If it doesn't work, remove it and try the next fix. It's reversible, it's guided and it saves you from breaking your bootloader. Okay, let's talk Wayland progress. Cinnamon's Wayland session is still experimental, but Linux Mint 22.3 makes some serious moves towards actually making it usable. The big blocker before was input. Cinnamon relied on old X11 keyboard code that just couldn't work under Wayland. This resulted in complex keyboard layouts such as Chinese not working properly. I will talk about this in a bit. Muffin, the compositor here itself also got more Wayland compatibility patches. These are the unglamorous fixes that reduce weird artifacts and focus issues over time. It may not be ready for daily driving yet, at least officially, but it is getting closer. Fractional scaling has also been improved with this release and now you get the option to scale the content down as well as up. Basically, this is reverse fractional scaling. I don't know who'd use it, but yeah, it's here. There are still rough edges though. Fractional scaling can make text look fuzzy and gaming performance isn't quite where X11 is yet. The Mint team says Wayland won't be the default until mid to late 2026 at the earliest. And if you're curious, you can switch to the experimental Wayland session from the login screen and test it yourself. Just know you're stepping into work in progress territory. By the way, if you haven't already, check out my course Linux Mastery Express. I've designed this course to level up your Linux skills very quickly. With this course, you'll get so comfortable using the terminal commands that your friends will think you're a Linux wizard. You'll get perfect with the most used, most useful commands and also learn advanced things like using the vEditor and shell scripting as well. Linux Mastery Express, link in the description. Do check it out. Here's a simple feature that's going to save you a lot of headache. Nemo 6.6 now lets you pause and resume file copy, cut, paste operations. Imagine you're copying a massive 50GB video project to an external drive. Halfway through, you need to run a disk intensive render or compile some code before you'd either wait for the copy to finish or cancel it entirely and start work. Not anymore. Now you can just hit pause on the file transfer, do your work and resume it right where you left off. No corruption, no restart. This works by suspending the underlying IO stream, so it's clean and safe. 
This is also incredibly useful if you're on a slow LAN connection and need to manage bandwidth. Pause a large network transfer, stream that video call, then resume when you're done. It's straightforward. Next up, Cinnamon 6.6 replaces the old on-screen keyboard with a native implementation built right into the desktop. The old keyboard relied on GNOME's libcaribou library, which was unmaintained and frankly dying off. That created long-term stability risks. The new native keyboard is tightly integrated with Cinnamon and Muffin, which means it behaves better. It appears correctly about dialogues and apps instead of glitching behind them. I remember there was an issue when if the system needed your password, an on-screen keyboard would pop up behind the password dialog box, which essentially made it impossible to enter your password. You had to connect a physical keyboard to do that. It also follows your Cinnamon theme automatically. So if you're using the dark mode, the keyboard matches. And for touchscreen laptops, two-in-ones or accessibility setups, this makes the on-screen keyboard way more reliable. This is also foundational work for Wayland. The new keyboard stack handles layout switching and input methods like iBus much better, which is crucial for non-English users typing in languages like Japanese, Chinese, and Korean. Linux Mint 22.3 ships with the Linux kernel 6.14 as the default. This is a hardware enablement jump from the older 6.8 kernel that many users were on. For most people, this is a good thing. Newer kernel means newer, better out-of-the-box support for modern hardware. If you're installing Mint on a 2024 or 2025 laptop, kernel 6.14 dramatically increases the chances that your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, touchpad, and other components just work without manual fixes. You also get improved desktop responsiveness. The EEVDF scheduler updates in 6.14 make the system feel snappier when it's under load. This thing also gives you better battery life on newer Intel and AMD laptops stronger GPU support, especially for newer AMD and Intel graphics. This kernel also brings the powerful NT-Sync support that has shown to boost performance in Windows games running via Wine or Proton significantly, in some cases more than doubling the frame rates. This is actually quite big. Jumping from Linux Mint 22.2 to 22.3 might give you absolutely mind-blowing frame rate improvements in many games. Actually, go ahead and check it out. But there's a catch. If you're using an older NVIDIA Kepler GPU with 470 drivers, Linux kernel 6.14 can break things. Same goes for some virtual box setups where you might see black screens or graphics glitches. The good news, Mint keeps kernel version 6.8 available as a fallback. If 6.14 causes problems, you can install and boot into the older kernel from Grub's advanced options and remove the problematic one. Linux Mint 22.1 had replaced the old Redshift tool with native nightlight feature built right into Cinnamon. And with this version, the standout edition is the always on mode. Previously, you had to set schedules and the screen lighting would change according to your schedule. But there are some of us who actually wanted to keep the nightlight going all the time. I really prefer a little orangey tint on my screen, just feel smoother on the eyes. Now you can do exactly that. You can keep that warm color temperature active 24-7. This is a huge win for users with light sensitivity or anyone working in dark environments. And unlike Redshift, which broke on Wayland, this native implementation works seamlessly on both X11 and Wayland. I love this man. I just can't live without this feature. Linux Mint 22.3 makes a major leap in how it handles keyboard layouts and input methods. For the first time, Cinnamon now treats traditional keyboard layouts that is XKB and IBUS input methods like Japanese, Hindi or Korean as part of one unified system. This means you can switch between English and an IME like Mozak or Pinyin seamlessly. No more juggling between separate icons or inconsistent tray indicators. The keyboard settings and panel applet are now fully aware of both, displaying your active input method accurately every time. Under the hood, Mint's developers have removed the old libgnome KB dependency, replacing it with a native backend that's compatible with both X11 and Wayland. This is more than just a cleanup job. It's a forward-looking move that boosts input reliability across future Cinnamon Wayland sessions and ensures smoother behavior across different keyboard layouts. Yeah, this is all part of the grander Wayland scheme. Keyboard shortcuts also received a round of polish. Conflicts are handled more gracefully now and shortcuts are applied faster and more consistently, even after session reloads. It's one of those quiet upgrades that genuinely improves the daily experience, especially if you type code or switch languages often. Non-English typers will definitely feel the system more coherent now. The Workspace Switcher applet got a much needed visual upgrade. Instead of showing every window as an identical rectangle, it now displays only visible windows with their app icons overlaid. This makes a huge difference when you're juggling multiple workspaces. 
your browser workspace actually looks like it as a browser. Your terminal workspace shows terminal icons. No more guessing which workspace has what running. For people who use workspaces as an integral part of their workflow, this is a game changer. Before, all workspaces looked identical. Now you can spot exactly where you left Firefox or VS Code at a glance. Linux Mint 22.3 brings a deceptively powerful update to Timeshift, the system backup and restore tool. You can now pause and resume snapshots mid-operation. This matters more than it sounds. System snapshots can be disk intensive. Before, if a snapshot started while you're in the middle of heavy work or running on battery, you had to either let it finish or cancel it entirely and start over later. Not ideal. Now you can just hit pause, do your work and resume right where you left off. Combined with Mint's increasingly snapshot-centric upgrade workflow, this makes system recovery safer, more predictable and far less intrusive. Simple update but definitely meaningful. Warpinator, Mint's local file sharing tool also sees meaningful upgrades in 22.3. First up, IPv6 support. Warpinator now works reliably on modern networks where IPv4 discovery may fail or be restricted. This means better device discovery and more consistent connections, especially on entropies or university networks. But here's the cool part. Warpinator can now send text messages between devices, not just files anymore. You can share links, terminal commands, quick notes, whatever. It's turning into a lightweight local communication tool for your own devices. Both updates are simple, but they make Warpinator more versatile and reliable. Linux Mint 22.3 introduces a small but quite impactful quality of life improvement by reducing the system shutdown and logout timeout from 90 seconds to just 10 seconds. In previous releases, if an application or background service failed to close properly, Mint would wait up to a minute and a half before forcing shutdown. This often resulted in long blast screens or stopping job messages that made shutdown feel slow and unreliable. With Mint 22.3, the system now moves on much faster. If something hangs during logout, reboot or power off, it is forced terminated after 10 seconds instead of dragging the process out. For most users, this means significantly quicker and more predictable shutdowns, especially on desktops that occasionally have misbehaving apps or browser tabs. The benefit is simple, less waiting, fewer frozen shutdown screens and a snappier overall experience. Advanced users who rely on long-running shutdown tasks can still increase the timeout manually, but for everyday desktop use, the new default is a clear win. So there you have it, Linux Mint 22.3 Xena with Cinnamon 6.6. I'm going to be honest, I was genuinely surprised by this release. Linux Mint is known for not changing things too drastically. They are the reliable, boring distro, right? But changing the menu, that's a core feature. It's bold and honestly, I'm still processing it. I'm definitely missing the old menu. It was fast, colorful, just felt polished. But you know what? I am going to keep using the new one. I haven't made up my mind yet. And yeah, I know there are options like the cinema menu extensions to go back, but I want to give this a fair shot. We'll see how it goes. But what really blew me away are these new tools, the system information tool and the system administration tool. These are genuinely useful. And I'm especially hopeful about the system administration tool. It's only got boot menu options right now, but I can see this becoming something more really powerful in the future releases. And then there's the pause and resume support, file transfers, time shift backups. This is the kind of thing you don't realize you need until you have it. And it's interesting that these features just aren't available on other distros yet. Mint is quietly building out quality of life features that actually matter. Oh, and if you're a gamer, the kernel 6.14 bump with NT-Sync support, go test your games. Seriously, you might see some wild performance gains. So is this daily driver material? Absolutely, zero questions. Linux Mint 22.3 is solid, stable and packed with thoughtful improvements. If you're already on Mint, this is an easy upgrade. If you've been distro hopping and looking for something that just works, Mint 22.3 might be exactly what you need. The download link for Linux Mint 22.3 is given in the description below. Alright, if you found this video useful, if you enjoyed it, definitely consider subscribing to the channel and also leave me a big thumbs up. And if you're interested in learning up your Linux skills, the link to my course Linux Mastery Express is given in the description below. It's designed to teach you Linux and take you from zero to hero in the shortest time possible. You'll be using Linux like a pro within a matter of hours, so definitely check that out. Next up, check out the top 15 hottest hacks that will supercharge your Linux desktop's performance to the next level and truly unlock your Linux. It's got some really cool tweaks, so definitely don't miss that. Alright, this is Linux Techs, signing out.